Hey guys, it's Mei, Mei and today we're making a fancy folio. Now this is the folio that I taught in our Holly Jollyopolis online event. Um, so you'll get to see step by step how to do it. And this is the paper I used. Now hopefully we will have this in stock by the time this video goes up. We've ordered it, so this video is um, going up two weeks from the day I'm filming. So hopefully it'll be there and I love it. But this is an eight by eight pack and it's perfect for this folio. So let's get started. So the first cut we're gonna need is from a 12 by 12 piece of cardstock. We're gonna cut an eight and a quarter by 12 inch piece. And that is gonna be the bulk of our folio. This is gonna be what everything builds off of. So we'll put that there. We can put this aside for later. Next, I wanna make some pockets, which also turn into doors. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna cut this down to five and a quarter by 12. So we're just gonna keep the height but this is what we're looking for, five and a quarter by 12, and we'll need two of those. Now, while we're cutting, let's go ahead and do our other cuts from this same cardstock. The pieces we're gonna cut now are gonna come from two pieces of 12 by 12, okay? And you're gonna need to cut it kind of the way I tell you to, but we'll have all the information you need in the description below as far as measures and any PDFs or anything I have to go with this project, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna do is put this guy in my trimmer at seven and three fourths. So I'm going to cut it seven three-fourths. Just sit this aside. We're going to use that one in a second. Then I'm going to turn this into the trimmer, and I want to do a couple cuts. First, five and three-fourths. This is going to be the largest photo from our waterfall, okay? Then I'm going to do five inches, and they're still seven and three-fourths because we already cut that before, so we got that done. Now with this one, we need to cut a piece of it because we're gonna use it in another way, but this one is gonna be two and three-fourths by 12. Just cut that one like that. So that's one piece all done. These pieces I'm just sitting aside. We can use these later or put them in our scrap bin. Let's get another piece of 12 by 12 to do our second set of cuts. On this page, it's important that you take this first cut. This first cut is three by 12. I need the whole length of the cardstock, so I wanna make sure I cut it first. So three by 12. Then with what's left, we're gonna turn it to its side. We're gonna cut that same seven and three fourths again, just like this. And now we're gonna cut this one down. So I need one that's three and a half, one that's four and a quarter. Again, these are our waterfall pieces for photos. So four and a quarter. This piece can go with our scrap, but this piece that we sat to the side, we need to cut this one down too. We need to cut this down to six, also scrap on this side, okay, by two and three fourths. This is the, pretty much the majority of all the cuts we need. I think that is all that we need for the folio. If I run into any more, we'll do them in a minute, but I think that's it. All right, let's get our scoreboard out. So on our scoreboard, this is the piece we cut first. This is our eight and a quarter by 12 inch piece. And we're gonna make some scores. This is gonna be what houses our waterfall right here. Now, I didn't have a way around this. I have to use eights, but it's not a big deal because your scoreboard should be marked. And if it's not marked, every single line is an eighth of an inch. So if you do have to count, it's pretty easy, okay? So for your first score, I want you to score at one and three eighths. It's even weird for me to say it because I never do eights, but I needed it here. Then I want you to do it at one and seven eights. So this is our spine, one of our spines. Then we're gonna come down to this end and we're gonna do 10 and one eighth. And then 10 and five eighths, just like so. This is the back or the main part of the folio. Now let's go to our pocket pieces which are these taller pieces we did that are five and a quarter by 12. Here's where we're gonna score these guys. We're gonna score the whole length, even though you can't see it. Our first score here is gonna be half an inch, and it's gonna go all the way down the page. Then we're gonna come out here and score at four and three quarters. We're basically just getting half an inch on either end, and we're gonna turn it on the 12 inch side, and we're gonna score it at eight and a quarter. Now we need to do that twice, that's one. Let's go ahead and take the other one and do it the same way. So half an inch and then four and three fourths, turn it and score an eight and a quarter. All right, we can pretty much, well, no, let's do one more. If we're gonna score, let's get all our scoring done. 
Let's go ahead and take our piece that is um, three by 12. This is what's gonna hold our waterfall pictures. So we need to make some scores on here. So on this one, we're gonna put it in our scoreboard with the 12 inch side at the top. And we're gonna score it at these places. We're gonna score it two and three fourths, three and a half, four and a quarter, five, and then five and three fourths. So that's the scores we need here. See those? All right, we can move on from that. Let's go ahead and assemble our pockets. And we're gonna be doing two of these. So I'm gonna do one with you and then I'll do one off screen. The first thing I want you to do is go ahead and fold this in half, just like this. We need to make a little cut and I think this will work better if we fold it in half for you to see it. Here's what you're gonna do. Down here, where that score line crosses the middle, I want you to make a nip or a little, a little slit right to the half inch score mark that runs this way, okay? Then on this bottom shorter piece, I want you to make a little angle cut up just like that, okay? So it should look like that. Now I'm gonna do the other side the same. So a little slit to that first score and then a little angle cut here. That's just to take some of the bulk out. And honestly, when you're doing this side, you really do wanna cut that score mark away. I didn't quite get it here because we don't need that score mark at all. I'm just gonna cut that away the one that's on the long side, and just make that as straight as you can. That's actually gonna be like the bottom of your um, folio door, if you will, if you wanna say door. All right, so that's what that one's gonna look like. Let me cut the other one. Now we're gonna fold these half inch pieces in, okay? And you're gonna think this is strange, but let me show you what we're doing. We're gonna keep these. We could have cut these away, but the reason I decided not to is because where these are gonna live in our folio they'll really add stability for me. I really do need them. So we're gonna fold these in and glue them down. So I'll show you here, I'm gonna keep folding and get those nice and creased. Let's go ahead and do this one too. Now I'm gonna go ahead and glue these down and this, you'll be surprised how much stability this adds to our little gatefold opening. Then you'll just close that into the glue. And something that I found works really well is to take your bone folder and just sort of burnish that down. It really sticks well when you do that. Now, the, all, this, all four of those that we folded, we're gonna glue down. So you can see there, I've got those glued down. Now we're gonna make pockets out of this bottom section. So we're just gonna fold these up. I'm gonna rub that in like that a little bit, get that nice and square. We're gonna do them all this way. These are gonna be gusseted pockets. So on these, we're gonna put the glue on the outside of that fold, and then fold this up onto the top and just place this down. Now, try to get it, you know, fairly flat, but also give yourself a little bit of room up here so you can put stuff in it. Don't make it so flat that you can't get anything in the pocket. That one seems to be lifting just fine. So I'm gonna rub all of these down nice and smooth. And that is one done, let's do the second. All right, two pocket and doors done. I'm gonna call them doors. Now let's go to our main folio piece. Let's do our folding and creasing here. This is the very first piece that we scored. So what we're gonna do is get this all folded and creased nicely. Okay, now we can glue our little pockets on that we just did. So I'm gonna bring one over here and I wanna open this up. And on the outside flap, on the outside of our score mark, I wanna add glue. And you'll see how sturdy this is gonna be. I wanted to make sure um, that our little gatefold opening got as much stability as it could get, and this is really gonna help. That's why we left those little pieces, and here's what we're gonna do. I want you to lay this piece, oops, not all in your glue first. Lay it right beside your score mark, okay? Then I want you to lift that score mark up and push that to it, and just bring this flap over. Don't worry that you're seeing this seam. All these seams will go away when we decorate, but I really like how that gets on there nice and square like that. We'll trim this off, that's no big deal, but you can see here how our door opens and has this pocket and all of this will get decorated so it'll be super cute, don't stress. Now we'll put the other one in. I'm just gonna turn it upside down to do it. Now, if you turn it upside down like I am, make sure when you put your pocket in, you put it in the right orientation. Ask me how I know. <laughs> Not the first time I've made this one. All right, so. I'm gonna make sure my pocket is correct. It should match this one, okay? I'm gonna bring it to that score mark. 
lift that score mark up and just get this guy in all the way to the score mark. And it doesn't hurt to burnish. I think it makes it stick really well. All right, so now if I turn this back around, you'll see, I'm gonna lift my spine up because I squished it. You'll see that this is how this guy's gonna close. It overlaps slightly. Yours may overlap more or less, it won't really matter, but right now it has a slight overlap, okay? So these pieces where it's kind of hanging off, let me show you what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna lift this up like this and take my scissors, and I'm just gonna kind of trim that back just to where it's not quite so obvious. And that page could have been a little crooked. It kind of went away when I did that. And so now you can see how smooth that is. And I think I need to do that on this end as well. No big deal, we're just gonna disguise our little, um, I don't know, our fold or cut or whatever it was that caused that. So you can see that kind of just goes away. And now we have nice, even little pieces. All right, let's make the waterfall portion. For this guy, I want you to go ahead and make all of the folds. You can't see the score marks. I'm trying to, there they are. I want you to make all these folds. Just fold them and crease them. And the thing you wanna make sure you do is that you get them nice and even. So I want you to line up this cardstock along the side here. Make sure it's square and then crease. And you're gonna do every line like that. Okay, so we have one here. So fold it down, line it up. As it lays down, kind of push it into place. Just keep this piece as square as you can. This is the mechanism, honestly, that does the work. So we need to kind of spend some time on it, getting it nice and square. Now I've done them all in one direction. I wanna go ahead and just finger press them in the opposite direction. And the reason I'm doing this is we need this piece to be fairly fluid to make this work. So I'm just gonna go in both directions, not really creasing in both directions, I don't need to do that. Just, just to make it pretty fluid like that, okay? Now, let's lay this down. Let's bring our pieces over that are gonna to amount to this. All right, so they're gonna work like this. There's your largest piece, that's your second largest piece, your third largest, and then your fourth, okay? These other pieces that we have, we're gonna use in a few minutes. These are the pieces you're looking for, all right? We're gonna start with the smallest of our waterfall. And I'll tell you the measurement so you know which one I picked up. This guy is seven and three fourths by three and three fourths. So that's the one we're gonna start with. What I'm gonna do really quick on this one is make a pencil mark, okay? I'm gonna use my ruler. I don't know if you've ever used one of these centering rulers. They work really great for this. I'm gonna find the center of this guy. So what I need to do is match up the same measure on either end with my ruler. And I have, I've got the same measure here and here. I'm gonna take a pencil and make a mark right here at the top, okay? Now I'm gonna do the same thing on this little guy. You don't have to do this every time. We just need to do it this time and everything else will work. Now I want you to skip this bottom square. This is just an attachment square. We don't need to put anything on it. We wanna put a mark on this second one. So let's center this guy. Gosh, that was it. Let me make sure, five and a half. Well, let's go up here, one and a half, one and a half, okay? Let's make a mark right there. So now when I glue these together, I know where they need to go. And if I have this one square, everything else will be square. So I'm gonna add glue inside, just at the top of this little square, this little rectangle. Okay, just a little line right there. Then I'm gonna make my pencil marks match right to the score mark. Don't go over your score mark, just take it right to that first score mark and I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, I'm gonna bring this up. So you can see here, I've got it right to the score mark and glued down. That's our first section. Now the second part is easy. This time you can fill all of this up with glue. That first one, you don't fill it with glue the whole way because it needs a little bit of extra give. But that little section of score, I'm gonna fill up. I'm gonna take my next largest piece and here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna line it up at the bottom down here. I'm gonna line up my paper where my finger is here. And then wherever it goes is where it goes. Okay, I just think that works better that way and it helps us get everything nice and lined up. Now we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna add glue to this section, the whole rectangle under the score mark. Take our next largest piece. We're gonna line at the bottom and then place it down and where it goes is where it goes. All right, you guessed it, one more time. Got one more piece we're gonna put here. Line up the bottom and then glue it into place. 
So you see how we only have to center that first one? That makes it really, really easy. So this piece is gonna fold under and come out the other side. So you can see here where it lays, that's what it's gonna look like. So that is the first part of our waterfall. Let's make our attaching strip. So this strip here is gonna attach this piece into our folio, but I need it longer than it is. That's why you have two pieces the same width. These are your, um, I think these are two and three fourths, let me measure. Yeah, two and three fourths wide pieces. I want you to overlap this 12 inch one and this six inch one, just about half an inch to an inch. Just overlap them to make this longer. It really doesn't have to be a specific, just, a, just as long as they're overlapping. And a tip is, if you wanna make sure it's good and straight, sit it up on your work surface and press it down as the glue is setting, and then you know you're getting a straight strip, okay? All right, now we need another cut. So I need a piece of cardstock that is eight by eight, and this piece of cardstock can be whatever cardstock you're using to decorate your album with. So if you have a paper pack that you're using, you can pull this out of that paper pack. If not, just use a coordinating piece of cardstock or you could use another piece of craft to match your folio, but I think it's really pretty if you go ahead and start decorating in this section. All right, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna lay this guy across like this. Okay, this is the strip we just glued together, and we're gonna place it around here. Now, right now, I'm not measuring anything. All I'm gonna do is eyeball this guy in the center, and I can use my grid to help me get things lined up. I'm gonna line this up here, and I'll just make sure this is straight. Again, I'm not worried about measure at this point. I just want it straight. And I'm gonna take one end and just fold it up to that piece of cardstock. We're not making a belly band, but it's it's kind of that same way we do that. I'm gonna do this side and fold it up to this side of the cardstock. And see how these don't match up? We're gonna make them match up. So I'm gonna push this piece and pull this piece until they're square. Then I'll take my bone folder and press them down where they are. So we're just gonna teach the cardstock that that's where we want it to live, okay? So now where this cross is over, put your finger here lift this up and put your glue on the other side of your finger. Does that make sense? To the side where we need to glue this guy down. Again, I'm not gluing it to the blue. We're just wrapping it around the blue. It's actually very important it doesn't stick to the blue just yet. We need it to stay pretty loose. All right, this is lifting up over here, so I'm gonna train it again, get that to lay flat, okay? So that's what we're looking for. It's not attached, it's just laying there. Now, I'm gonna move this down, I'm gonna say about an inch from the bottom. It doesn't have to be exactly, maybe an inch and a quarter from the bottom, something like that. And now we're gonna bring our waterfall piece over. This piece in the back, you can see what it looks like, okay? This piece here needs to slip under this piece. So it's gonna go under the crossover piece. Then I wanna show you this, it's gonna be hard to show you on camera. This piece that I told you we weren't gonna glue anything to that we um, scored, I'm gonna try to lift it up so you can see it. There we go. So this piece here is what we're gonna glue to this strip here. I know it seems weird, but that's the only place the glue's going, here to here, all right? So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and put glue in this area, just like so. Then, I'm gonna flip this guy over and I'll have to look under this, okay? You'll, have, you'll see me lift up and look under this, but I'm gonna line this up as centered as I can get it. So lining up my cardstock on the top, you know, on our, in our blue, lining up either side. Right now I'm looking at this side and this side, getting those nice and even. And then I'm looking at the bottom and lining it up on that strip and getting it straight pretty straight, it's not perfect. And then I'm gonna press this down and I'll lift this and show you as best I can. Hang on just a second, let me pull this out. Okay, you see that piece that's glued down? That's the piece we wanna glue down. Let me lay this down so it can finish drying. But that's the piece we want to glue down. So at this point, all we have glued in is that strip to our loose piece, okay? So remember, this is, now, is still doing this number. If it's doing this, you've done it right. If this whole piece is sliding all over the place, that's exactly what you want it to do. See that? Okay. Now what I want you to do is put this guy in place. I don't want my little pull tab to be outside of my folio. I want it to live up inside of here, right? But I also want some space up here to decorate. So I want my um, pictures to stay low like this. Now you might want them to be higher. You might want to slide this guy up 
and then have your pull tab here and put decorations down here. I'm gonna do my decorations above. I don't know why, it's just what I see in my head. So I'm gonna slide this guy down till I have about the same all the way around. And I got a little crooked, you can see that, but it won't matter. As long as this guy is inside of your folio, that's a little better, I was able to straighten it up, you're fine. So that's what I'm looking for. Now what I wanna do is hold this together, hold this together and flip it over, okay? Um, place this down on my work surface. I wanna take my glue and slide it under here and I wanna push into kind of the center and we're gonna glue this strip down just by running glue behind it and pressing it into place. I'm gonna turn it and lift up this end and do the same thing. Press that in and get that glue in there, just like that. That is what we wanna do <laughs> with our little waterfall mechanism. Now we can put it into our folio. So let's bring the folio over and kind of lay it down kind of flat. Before I put glue on this, I want to show you where it's going. It's going to live right here in the middle. And look how strong, how sturdy this is going to make the center of our folio because we're going to glue this down all the way. And then, of course, we'll decorate. All right, so let's glue it down. You can use sticky tape here if you prefer. Sometimes on these big places like this, it's good to use sticky tape. Um, I'm just going to use wet glue. I've made a couple of these, and the wet glue works just fine. Make sure you get this glued into place. Actually, the more you glue that into place, the even better because it's gonna be what gets most of the tension on our little waterfall dealie. All right, let's turn this around and let's center it in that section of our folio inside the spines. Just like so. And then these guys close like this or like this. You can overlap it either way. And so when you open it, when this is all glued into place, you'll have this where you can pull it and your pictures will appear. Isn't that awesome? I love how that works. I think that's a neat way to have a waterfall in the middle of your folio. All right, so now we move on to the fun part, decorating. Now that I've got this guy built, all I'm gonna do is take my paper that I showed you earlier and go through and make the cuts and layer everything on the pages. Um, so I'm just gonna do that off camera because you've seen me do that a thousand times, but I'm literally just gonna go through here, pick different pages, cut them to fit and lay them down, and then we'll get right back together. Now, if you took my class at Holly Jollyopolis, you will know that we used these little clasp to close the book. If I don't have these in store by the time this video goes up, we'll be sure to link you to these where you can get them. And you got one of these in your um, kit, one of the other set, okay? We couldn't get enough of, of each same, so you got one of the other. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna play with this um, rectangle or this uh, squarey one first, okay? So what I've done is on the back, I've added a piece of adhesive. This is um, sticky tape. And I don't wanna mount this straight to my album or straight to my paper that's gonna be covering. I want a little more stability. So here's what I'm doing. I've taken a piece of cardstock and for this one in particular, this um, clasp, I cut it to an inch and a quarter by an inch and a quarter. And I'm gonna put this right to the edge and try to center that. It might be best to pick it up and look at it. I'm a little bit off center, but it's not gonna be the end of the world. We're gonna let it ride like that. So I'm just sticking it down for now with the sticky tape. And I'm gonna do that on the other side as well. So I have another piece cut here. I'm trying to line these up, that's how they go. I'm gonna peel that backer off and stick it down. Then we're gonna put it onto the cover. And again, same thing, and I know my hand is over it, but I'm holding it like this, and I'm gonna line this flat line up with the flat edge here and center it and just stick it down. The sticky tape is really just gonna hold it in place while we work. That's really all that's for. So now when we put this on the book, this little guy will go like this and he will clasp in to shut our book. Let me show you how this works. Breaking in here to ask you to hit that red subscribe button. It's free. Also hit the bell button beside it. You can help me reach my big goal this year of 400,000 subscribers. Okay, back to crafting. So I have not um, glued anything down yet because I want to send this through both sides, or at least I'm thinking I do. All right, so I've got this guy like this, okay? And here is our little front closure. So one of them is gonna get mounted to this side, and then one will get mounted to the other side. And this is where you'll have to pay attention, okay? I wanna see how far away I need to be to be able to latch. So I've got this like this, 
I'm gonna see if that'll go, and it's too tight. So that means my latch is gonna have to go right to the edge of the um, book, which is actually good. I have to go right to the edge of the uh, pages. So that'll be easy. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna mount these on because they're not gonna be needed at this point. Can you tell I'm just figuring this out? I love these, but sometimes it takes a little work, and I thought rather than just showing you the finished project, I'd show you how I kind of came up with it, because if you can't find the same latches I have, I can show you kind of how I worked it out, and then you can work it out as well. All right, so let's glue this guy in, and he goes on this side. Nope, wrong side, he goes over here. This page I just cut in half. I thought it was so pretty for the front. All right, and then the one on the other side. Now, I'm going to eyeball the center because I'm not too concerned about it. This is where my clasp are going to go. And you see how I'm putting that right to the edge of my um, door. We'll call it the door. I'm going to do the same with this guy and put him right to the edge over here. And I think I'll use sticky tape to give him some extra stability. Look how cute that looks. It looks kind of like a belt. I think it looks cool. So that's going to go right there. Now, if you have this style of clasp, I'm going to show you how we're doing this one as well. So, this is how this one closes, okay? And what I've done here is I've cut two pieces, one and three-fourths by three-fourths. And I want to show you what I'm going to do. These are hollow on the back, so they're, the sticky tape is not going to work quite the same. So, this is my plan. I'm going to kind of make a glue dot. If you have a glue dot, just use that. But what I'm going to do is peel the backer off of this... Um, sticky tape and I'm gonna kind of roll this up. This is only to hold it temporarily. We're gonna put the brads through to hold it permanently. Then I'm just gonna stick this on like so and then I'm gonna put this down centered or not centered but in about an eighth of an inch away from the edge. I'm pretty sure this is where I want it to line up. Now let's double check that okay because again I'm just kind of eyeballing but you can see that I've got that just stuck there to hold and so I want that one to be about an eighth of an inch, where the other one we put right on it, this one I'm putting about an eighth of an inch away. So when I put this one down, right to the edge, this guy should go right into the hole. Let's, let's secure it as well. So same thing, let's make ourselves a glue dot. If you have a glue dot, use it. It would work perfect, but um, if you don't, you can do this. I have a glue dot, but in our class, we didn't have glue dots, and I wanted to show them how to make this happen even if they don't. Just kind of curl this up, put it inside here, just so that it sticks out a little bit. Maybe not on that hole, let's go like that. All right, and then I'm gonna place this about an eighth of an inch from the edge and just kind of centered top to bottom. Now when I bring this over, it should close no problem. Let's put this guy in and that's how we'll do it. We'll put it right to the edge and that's how our clasp will go if we're using that clasp. So see how that works? You just have to kind of play around before you glue it down, okay? Then you're ready to glue it down. And if you wanna put another piece behind it, maybe you wanna kind of put a pattern behind it or something, you can do that because we haven't glued it in place. So now that we know where these guys need to live on their paper, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna make a little mark just in case these guys shift. So I'm gonna use a black pen and go inside there and make a little mark. I don't plan to have to do that, but I'm gonna make a little mark just in case. Like I said, in case they move. All right, then a post-it notepad, a mouse pad, whatever you've got, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna place this down like this, holding that where it's supposed to be, and I'm gonna poke a hole. So I got that one started. Now we're gonna do the same over here. And if you don't wanna use your post-it notepad because you don't wanna poke through, just use your mouse pad. I'm gonna use this post-it notepad either way because this is my scratch pad, so it's fine. All right, so I got those done. Now what I'll do is just make those a little bit larger for my brads to go through. And I'm just poking the pokey tool all the way down because I don't wanna fight the brads. Um, I want them to go through nice and easy. Do them like that. Let's put this guy back and then hold them in place and grab your brads. Feed that through, look how pretty that is, I love it. And then you're just gonna push this down in the back. Now you can open it up like butterfly it out. It's gonna be hard for me to do on camera for you guys to see. I'm gonna use my pokey tool to help me separate it. So I'm just gonna spread that out in the back, just kind of butterfly that, or you can just do it to one side. 
it's really not going to hold. I mean, you just got to keep it in place because we're going to secure it with more sticky tape on the back. So we'll be fine. Also, if they're super, super snug, go ahead and start them before you put them in. There we go. Just get them separated a little bit. Same on the other side. All right, so for these class, what we're gonna do is put their brads in, and these are super easy because we're able to stick them straight to the cardstock. So I'm just gonna poke some holes to get started here. Just a couple like this. In the middle of those areas. Then I'm gonna pick it up and just go ahead and make that hole larger with my pokey tool so I don't have to fight the brads when we put them through. Like so. And we'll brad them on. So this particular um, clasp comes with brads. And I'm just going to put those in and butterfly them out in the back. You can see how those look. Now those are ready to install. Now I had originally decided to put this on with sticky tape. And that might be the way I should do it. But I think I'm going to use wet glue. And I'll show you why. I'm going to go ahead and cover this with wet glue in the back really well. Get all these areas. This, I'm using my art glitter glue, so it'll hold really, really good. It'll be fine. So I want to make sure I get it good and covered. The reason I want to do this is I think I might need a tiny bit of wiggle room when I put this down. So everything is secure. The brads are holding everything on. So I'm going to do it like this. Let me turn this guy over in my hand. Like so. And I'm going to hold this together as I place it down with it latched. And I'm going to go eyeball center the, or eyeball the center there. And you can wiggle it because we're using wet glue. So I have a little bit of movement. So see how I'm just kind of wiggling that into place, getting everything squared up where it needs to be. And then I can press it down and get that to adhere. So we're not looking for perfect. We're just looking for, you know, pretty centered and making sure that latch will work. Now, another thing you can do, if you don't want to use the wet glue like I did, you can place this down and trace where you want it to go, which is easy. Just place the lock, trace it around, and then use your sticky tape that way. I think the wet glue is going to work fine. It might even be stronger because the wet glue is going to be a nice, sturdy um, adhesion. But look how cute that is. I love that. So now we have our little latch. Works the same if you're doing a latch like this. You want to go ahead and latch it. Okay, and go ahead, when you put it down, you either trace where it's going to go or make sure you know where it's going to go and use whichever one of the adhes adhesives you want to use. All right, so we've got our latch in. Let me show you the inside, where we are so far. So I've covered all of the places I want to cover with pattern paper. And I want to show you, I cut these two pieces to be tags. I think I'm going to add more tags. We'll get to that in a few minutes. I've got an idea for this area. This pocket holds a lot. It's pretty roomy, so I think I can do even more than I've done there. But let's talk about this section. I want to put photo mats on here, and I want to show you something. This is our new stamp set. I've already taken out of the package. It's our new stamp set just for this purpose. This one is called Prompted Album. So you know before we've had like prompted memories. Well, this is Prompted Album, and what it does is you can use it to decorate your photo areas to let the recipient, if this is a gift, know where to put things. So like this piece is a piece that's going to go right here. We'll give you the measurements for all of this um, also in the description and the blog post. So this piece is going to go here and I want to stamp it with like place photo here, but maybe I want to put like something to celebrate or that just happened or whatever if I want to kind of give them prompts for what to put down or I can use these to make ephemera to go throughout the book as well. So I'm just going to go through and stamp place photo here. Um, I'm, and I can tell them the size too because what we did on this set is we gave you individual numbers. So if you want to tell them what size this is so they'll know how big of a photo to put there, you can do that as well. I'm just going to stamp place photo here for now. Now that I've got them all stamped, I'm going to glue them into the book. I should say here too, I designed this for a class so we had only a limited time so that's why I'm using like big spaces here for one photo. I think this would be cute if you did two photos here, if you gave them two spots for photos or something like that or even for yourself, I think it would look really cute to do that. As I'm going through gluing down, I'm thinking about each one of these pages, and honestly, you could turn these into any kind. This could be like mini scrapbooks right here. You could pick a photo and then really, really show it off on these big expanses that we have for it. Or you can just do one photo and add some journaling or something like that. That would be super cute too. 
So look how nice this looks. Now, I haven't done anything to my handle to make it cute or anything yet, but see how this works? Isn't this so neat? This is a neat way to show off some of your pictures. I will show you this. When it's being pulled, if you pull it super tight like this, you might have to help it get started a little bit, but the more you do this, the easier this guy goes in and out. Isn't that cute? I love it. Okay, let's do some more decorating. So you know how I told you I thought I had room to add more over here? I'm adding three tags here instead of just one because I think there's plenty of room. And let me show you how I'm doing that. So these pieces are an inch shorter than each other. So this guy is three and three fourths wide by seven and three quarters, six and three quarters, five and three quarters. So the width is the same. So now I wanna put the little tag corner at the top, but I wanna show you this. You can use your corner rounder, you can use a tab punch, you can use anything you want to make these corners. But let's say you don't have something um, in your stash that makes these corners. Let me show you how to do it. So using your cutting uh, grid, that's what I'm gonna use, my cutting mat or a ruler, I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna make a mark three quarters of an inch on two sides, in and down. Three quarters of an inch down and three quarters of an inch in. Then I'm just gonna take some scissors, or you could use your trimmer for this, and I'm just going to cut from mark to mark and give myself that little piece, okay? Then I'm gonna take this little guy and I'm gonna put him on the other side here, okay? You don't even have to measure, you can do this. Um, you could measure both sides if you wanted to, or you could just make a nip on the other side and use that piece over here as your pattern. I've done this so many different ways over the years. So there's my first tag. Then to make sure it matches all of my others, I'm gonna take my other tag, tap them down to what would be the top. Then I'll cut using that tag as my uh, pattern, see? And I'm gonna do the same thing with the big guy. So same thing, I'm gonna tap these down to the top that's the only thing you gotta remember, make sure you're cutting to the top, okay? And then this one right here. You guys, I have to apologize. I just looked in camera and I noticed that you're seeing my injury, my little injury, and if that freaks you out, I'm so sorry. I'll grab a Band-Aid or something for the rest of the video, but it's my sewing injury. I injured myself sewing, so I'll cover it up. I apologize. All right, these guys then can slide right in here. Of course, they've gotta be They've gotta be zhuzhed up, they've gotta be decorated a bit, but look at all the land, all the um, real estate we have there. And that's really helping to kind of bulk up our folio and make it feel nice and full. So now I'm gonna decorate this section up top and I think this will be cute. This was a little scrap I had left over from something I had cut from, I think from the tags. And I just trimmed it down to fit right inside here. I think that'll be cute. Let me show you this too. So from the ephemera pack, I found this adorable little let it snow kind of buckle. It's kind of like a buckle. It's got the little holes on the end. Then we've got these um, tickets. I wanted to say tags, these tickets. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take them apart. They're fragile, but I'm gonna take them apart here. And I'm choosing these two in particular because I don't wanna put the red on it because I think it won't show as well. But what I'm gonna do is turn this into a bigger piece of ephemera by sticking these guys in like this and doing this one like this and adding it to that strip. I think that'll be cute. And I didn't want to glue it down yet in case it was too long and I needed to trim something off. So let's just see. So if we go like this, just think this is cute. And then we do like these. Yeah, I'll have to trim one off and I might even scoot them a little bit so I trim both off on either end. And I think I may put these up on foam. I think they'll be cute. And I've got room here because I've got a little thickness right here. So I'm going to put this up on foam and create this little piece to go up there. I think that's really cute. I like how it's got some dimension to it. And I think it looks cute up there. Let's do something down here. Let's see what we want to do with this. So looking through the paper pack, I found this little piece right here on this cut apart sheet. I'm going to see if I can cut this apart without too much damage to anything else. See if I can just harvest this little guy out of here. So I got him out, and look, I think he's gonna fit here really cute. He fits exactly just about. Let me get him up in there. So he will go just like that. I think that's cute. And I thought about maybe adding something like this to be able to help pull it, but I don't know. I kind of just like this on here. I think that's super cute, and you do have to kind of reach up there and get it either way. You could always add a tab or something. We could do that. Let's, let's add that. So what I have here is a piece of cardstock that is one and a quarter by three inches. It's the same length as my little anchor strip. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to nip the corners to kind of look like a tag. 
Not much though, so I'm not using a punch here. I just want that tiny little nip. Did you see that? I'm not even gonna match them up. I'm just gonna nip both sides just to give it a little bit of interest so that it doesn't look perfectly straight. And then I'm going to sandwich this on top of there. So I'm gonna put glue on both sides. And then I'm gonna put it underneath the little tab and just sorta of clean that little guy up a little bit with that pretty red piece. Make him look a little fancier, just like that. And then I have this little piece that says, winter weather is better together. I'm gonna glue that down there as well. Just kind of centering it there. So now my little tab is a little bit meatier there. And I'll see if I wanna add anything to the sides. I think I will, let me look what I've got. So this is a piece I have left over from cutting something else. It's an um, inch and a half by seven and three fourths. I'm going to just slide it under here like this just to decorate that edge and make that look nice and um, matchy, make it match everything else. I really like that, that looks pretty. All right, let's do this. Let's work on the tags. I wanna do something different to them. So because I have three tags stacked on top of each other and I don't really want a bunch of ribbon or dimension there, I want them to be able to live there together. I'm gonna play with the ephemera and I think the ephemera for this set is so pretty. So what I'm gonna do, instead of poking holes and doing all that, I'm gonna make pulls for these tabs out of these pieces. And I need to look and see how much height I've got on this one. This is gonna be the tallest tag that will live here. Oh, look, we've got plenty of height. Matter of fact, I could put this down here. Let's do it. So I'm gonna put glue here at the top. And I'm gonna use this um, stamp from the ephemera and put it down so that it kind of layers up there at the top like that. Isn't that pretty? It's different. I mean, I'm sure someone's done this before, but it's different for me. And I think that looks kind of neat. And I still have all this space to use for journaling or pictures or anything else. Let's do the others. I just think this stamp is so pretty. I'm gonna put it here at the top. And then this piece, which is gorgeous. Look how that just sets that tag off. It almost makes the tag look like it has a whole different shape. Then when they lay on top of each other in the book, see how it'll be kind of, you know, give it a little bit of definition. It's a busy book, it's busy pattern, so you have to think about stuff like that. Now for this one, let's bring the book back over for this one too. It's gonna live in this pocket. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this tag in. And then I'm gonna lay these out. I think these two flowers are very pretty. So what I'm gonna do is put a little glue at the top of the tag and decide how far up this is gonna go. About like that. I love that showing on the red like that. And then I have the other one that's gonna go beside it. And I'm turning this um, kind of this frilly edge down because I don't want it to come out of the book and kind of get broken off. So I think it'll, pretty, it'll be pretty like this. So I'm gonna turn this guy like this and I am gluing it down. I just think it's safer. Even if I glue something underneath here, it's probably safer just to glue it on top of that because that is a very delicate little piece. So now I'm gonna put a little glue under this guy. And that is the top of that big tag done. Let's do the others. So let's put these guys in their little homes. And see how I just dressed it up? I just think that's pretty. It's not quite so plain and we didn't add a whole bunch of bulk. These are gonna get bulky when we put pictures or journaling on them because there's three of them in the pocket. So I don't really wanna add like um, brads or anything. Like I was thinking about doing eyelets and stuff. I just think it'd be too thick over there. So now we have these two great places to put some cutesies. Let's see what we're doing there. So covers are my nemesis. I don't know if they are yours, but I always put so much pressure on myself to get these right. I decided to take a break from the inside and do the cover first so I don't accidentally use some ephemera that I would want to use out here. And let me show you what I wanna do. I really wanna use this guy on the cover. And I will also tell you that cameras are deceiving. This looks like you can see it just fine, but in real life, it's very busy and it blends in. So here's what I did. I cut a piece of red to put behind it to really help it to pop. But when I did that, I noticed that it wouldn't fit here very well. So do you see how I did that? I snipped out a section to go right here and you really can't tell because the patterns are the same. So that's gonna live in that top corner. I think I'm gonna pop that up. So I'm gonna glue this down first. I'm just gonna tell you something. I have studied this cover and studied this cover and it's very hard. I'm, I struggle with covers. I look up um, inspiration online. I look at mini albums. I look at cards. Cause you know, you can just look at this like it's a six by six card and try to mimic that. 
but I do struggle with them. So for this one in particular, I wanted to play off of the let's get cozy on that one side. You see it already. Let me squeeze that in where it goes before I glue this down. But I wanted to play off of that. That's the reason I wanted to use this particular um, page for the cover is I love this little let's get cozy. Well, by adding bundle up, it's cute. Bundle up, let's get cozy. I think I'll pop this on some foam. So then he will just nestle. Let's get him where he needs to be. About like that. And so now you can see it better. See, it pops better. Now I want to play here. I still don't want to cover up Let's Get Cozy. I want to play in this little open area. So after playing around a little bit, here's what I think I'm going to do. I'm going to take some of this red. The red to me really pops on this cover and it pulls out what I'm trying to in the Let's, Co Let's Get Cozy and the little deer over here. And I'm going to put this underneath Let's Get Cozy like so on both sides there and also here try to get them pretty even won't really matter if they're not perfectly even and the reason it won't is because we're going to be putting other pieces on that'll kind of be so busy you won't notice it the next thing i want to do is i want to use this wheel i think it's pretty and i think by putting that piece down there it really helps it to pop and i can't decide if i want to pop it up it's a little bit fragile but i think it'd be so pretty that way let's pop it up i think it'd be pretty so I'm just going to decide which way is up. Do it like this. I'm going to let that hang to right to the edge of the page. I really want that to show right here. Then I want to show you these flowers are so pretty and they're very bright. I think they'll pop really well in this area. And I've got another one that I'm going to bring out from the other side. See how that just kind of carries the pattern on? And I think that's going to look pretty. So I'm going to put those there. They're going to need a little bit of foam. Then I've got these two little flowers that I think will look so pretty kind of just with those down in this area like so. And one down here. And then we just need to doll up the middle a little bit. So I love this snowflake. I just think it's so pretty. It reminds me of quilting. So I'm gonna put a little glue on this guy and put him on that red where you can really see him so I don't waste any of him. I want to really see him. And then I'm gonna take this guy and I think I'm gonna pop him up kind of in this area. I feel like this page is saying enough, but I really like this hello winter tag. So I'm gonna add it as well. What I mean by saying enough is it's got sentiments kind of our sayings everywhere, but this needs a little something and this guy will look really cute right here and he'll really pop in that area. And I think this side is done. Now I definitely want to bring something over here. So let's see what we can find for here. So I love these snowflakes and I think they really work over here. So I'm going to add snowflakes to this side. And when I think winter, I don't think about bunnies, but this bunny runs through this album pretty good. And I think he's so cute. So I think he's gonna go right here and I think I'm gonna pop him up as well. I'm gonna call that done on my cover. I will get so busy if I'm not careful. Does it need something else? I think I could go back and maybe add some bling or some pearls or something like that. And I may do that toward the end, but for now let's go back inside and see what we need to do. I plan to let these little guys do a lot of the work in here. I think they're really pretty and I think they'll pop really well. So I think inside I'm gonna add Let's Get Cozy here and there's no place like home, the snow place like home, and I'm gonna pop them on foam as well. Now this album is not done by any means because it needs its photos and we need to decorate it up when we put the photos in, but I am gonna stop here because I wanna use all my ephemera that I have left on these pages when I go and decorate with my photos and things like that. If I'm gonna use smaller photos, I would love to have plenty of ephemera to put around them in here. All right, you guys, I'm going to stop here and I'll tell you why. I've got the front like I like it, got everything laid out where I want it, but now it's time to bring in photos and journaling and things like that. I have a lot of ephemera left. I have a lot of paper left and I have plenty to use throughout the whole, the rest of the album. And because I have such large spaces here, this is a good opportunity to use my extra ephemera all throughout here, right? Because I have plenty of space to add photos and ephemera all the way around. 
as an example, let's say I put a four by six photo here. I could add this guy to kind of dress up the middle in some way. There's lots of things I can do with that. So I'm not gonna just add for the sake of adding, okay? I also can use it on my tags here. Maybe this one, I add a piece of white cardstock. I put my bear or my deer down here in the corner of that white cardstock and I use that for journaling or what have you. So I don't wanna waste all of those ephemeras just putting them in because I can, right? I love this guy. This First off, I love this album. Now, I have a question for you. Would you like to see me do this gatefold album and show you an alternative closure in case you don't have this? There is an option. There's another way you can close. It's a little bit different than I have in my mind. But in case you don't have this metal enclosure, let me know if you would like to see me show you how to do a closure for a gatefold that does not require extra hardware like that. But there you go, guys. Also, look on the back. How cute is that on the back? I love that back there. The whole cut apart sheet went on there perfectly. And this guy is ready for its close up. You know what I'm saying? It needs all its pictures. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching this. I cannot wait to see your fancy folios. We're gonna call this design a fancy folio because it has that fancy waterfall feature in the middle. All right, guys, you know the deal. I want you to subscribe if you enjoyed this or you liked any part of it. Be sure to hit the red subscribe button. You can also hit that bell button to get notifications when I post a video. Also, if you don't mind, head over to our customer gallery. If you're making one of these, share a photo with me and let me see what you're doing. You guys inspire me all the time. So let me see how you're using your gatefold albums or fancy folio albums at our customer gallery at maymaymadeit.com. Till next time, guys. Bye now.